Welcome back to the Binance Minipod series, where we summarize some of the latest pieces prepared by Binance Research. Binance Research is the market research and analysis arm of Binance. Find the latest reports and insights at research.binance.com. Hey everyone, this is Leslie from Binance Trading and I'm back again to give an overview of a recent piece that we published. This time uh, it's an update on the crypto correlations piece that we sent in the first quarter and we're updating it for the second quarter to see if there's been any new trends and if anything has changed from the first quarter. Let's kick it off. So in part one, we generally talk about the market overall. Second quarter has been a pretty bullish quarter overall for crypto. The total value of the space has risen by 139%. Uh, that's a US dollar equivalent of about $199 billion. It's the third best quarter by percentage, and it's the second best quarter by dollar value uh, behind the uh, fourth quarter of 2007, which we all must have experienced back then. So uh, it's, it's definitely been a strong quarter. This piece is uh, really more about correlations. So one thing we want to help out explaining here is that big table that we have here on chart three on the uh, Binance research piece. Uh, by the way, you can access the report by going to research.binance.com and clicking on the uh, correlation uh, article. So there's a big table here which we've color-coded nicely into blue and red. Just to step back a bit, if a name has red boxes, it means that the correlation between that name and the other names is not very high. Uh, this is daily return. So what that means is if you look at the table and you see link versus BTC, the correlation is 0 0.22. It means that if link goes up in price, BTC generally is less correlated and has a smaller chance of going up in price versus, say, the relationship between uh, Ethereum and BTC, which you can see here is 0 0.81. If you ask me, the numbers aren't the most important thing to check out. It's just to look at the general trend of that name and whether it's correlated or less correlated to other names. One important thing to look at is that uh, overall, the correlations are still high. You don't see any negative correlation here. A negative correlation means that if uh, your one name goes up in price, generally speaking, the related name or the name that you're comparing it to then drops in price. And so you see the general crypto asset class is still is still very correlated. There's three names that uh, I think in, in particular you can, you can see uh, has less of a correlation versus the other asset classes. And uh, they are Link, BSV, and BNB. Uh, you know, we, we write that we write in our piece uh, about why these these names may be less correlated. Uh, Link is uh, because of a lot of positive news and that it was uh, listed on some other exchanges as well. Uh, BSV, um, there's a lot of news on on you know a lot of arguments between between the different Bitcoin Cash uh, implementations. And with BNB, I think uh, generally this year it's been performing quite quite well. So so in general, the correlation has not been as high with with some of the other names. The one thing that we talked about in the first quarter and we continue to talk about in the second quarter is the so-called Binance effect. What that means is if that name is quoted on Binance or is listed on Binance, uh, the correlations between all these names are pretty high. Uh, there are a few names that uh, that are quite notable uh, in terms of their market cap and are not listed on Binance, uh, such as Tezos, XTC, uh, Dogecoin or Doggycoin, uh, DOGE, or BSV, Bitcoin SV. Uh, they are not listed on Binance currently, and all these names have lower correlations versus the other crypto assets versus everyone else. So I guess the Binance trading effect is real. Uh, if someone does come onto Binance to trade, Generally, there is more correlation, and what that means is probably if you're looking positively at one name that's listed on Binance, you're thinking positively of the of the other names on, on Binance as well. So there is some exchange effect there. One interesting point we see too is that when you look at proof of work versus non-proof of work, such as proof of stake coins, you'll see that they tend to clump together. So proof of work assets are more correlated with each other, and non-proof of work assets are less correlated with these proof of work assets over both quarters. And generally speaking, you see sectors as well. So, for example, uh, privacy coins such as Dash or Monero, they're highly correlated with each other. And also coins such as XRP and Stellar, they are highly correlated with each other as well. 
After looking at general correlation, what's interesting now is quarter on quarter. So basically, when looking at the uh, first quarter correlations and comparing it to the second quarter correlations, what are the differences or, or things that, that we see? So the first thing that, that we see is that uh, Bitcoin is less correlated with altcoins in the second quarter compared to the first quarter. And that is shown in the overall market gain. Uh, we, we did say earlier that the overall market has gained in, in cap by 139%. But for altcoins, it's only been up 71%. So you could say there is some kind of a flight to quality. In this rally, people are preferring to put their money into Bitcoin compared to the sort of smaller cap altcoins. The second thing that's, that's interesting is that proof of work assets started clumping together more. And so they started trading more as a, as a group and became less correlated than the other assets. So... There's reasons behind this, and um, you, you can tell exactly what's happening. But you could see that people investing in proof of stake or non proof of work assets are maybe different or may work to a different tune than the uh, investors or traders in the proof of work assets. Could be because of more minor concentration or, or minor participation in the proof of work assets, and they would not be playing in the in the non proof of work assets, causing the clumping effect. Finally, looking at uh, Doggy Coin or Doge Coin, this coin was even less correlated in the second quarter compared to the, the first quarter. Now, we just listed this coin, so we'd expect the correlation to go up, and this will be interesting, heading into third quarter to see what the effect will be. But uh, uh, as of the second quarter, the correlation went down, except for versus Litecoin. The, the reason for that is uh, there's been some news of merge mining where you have the similar methodology of, of mining both coins such that you can use the same equipment to mine both. And so we saw high correlation against Litecoin, but much lower versus everything else. One interesting group of coins are so-called launchpad coins. Due to a lot of new coins coming out and having a lack of history, we basically looked at BitTorrent, Fetch, and Seller as they were coins that came out during the first quarter. So we can compare them over quarters. It's very interesting that all these coins were highly uncorrelated with other coins. So they sort of traded on their own uh, patterns, uh, even versus BNB, though, you know, you needed to uh, pay for these coins with BNB in most cases. Uh, with BitTorrent, you, you could use TRX and BNB. But funnily enough, the correlation between Tron and BNB is actually higher than between uh, Fetch, Seller and BNB. So uh, it could be because of the, uh, the timing of the market and the situation. I think generally speaking, when Fetch and when Seller came out, the market was in sort of the same, same type of mentality or same type of uh, mood uh, versus when BTT came out, which is the first of these launchpad projects. But uh, it's very interesting that the coins that, you, the coins that you had to pay with to participate using BNB were less correlated with BNB compared to the BitTorrent, the first project. So in conclusion, this is just a quick update as to the correlations in the market and whether the Binance effect still exists, as well as some other patterns we saw. And uh, overall, I think the key takeaway point is that during the second quarter, when the market was very positive, we still see some kind of flight to quality where investors were investing more into Bitcoin and less into altcoins. There was an uncoupling of correlation between all the coins within the crypto asset class. And uh, so when you see the market has gone up quite a bit, uh, most of the move is, is really in Bitcoin compared to the altcoins. What does that tell for the future? I mean, it could mean flight to quality. I mean, Bitcoin maximalists will push for that. Uh, others may say Bitcoin is the first mover. And so the second wave will come around where altcoins could rally or, you know, Bitcoin could be overbought and, and it could snap back. Uh, this is all very interesting. So we'll have to see what the third quarter brings. Thanks everyone for listening. Bye-bye.